Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of the 22-23 Austrian Bundesliga season. Yes, I am barely going on vacation and the new Austrian season is already upon us. Now, uh, to be fair, last year started around the same time of the year and I'm shooting this now the day before I'm leaving on vacation and then we have one and a half uh, weeks until the league proper league kicks off. However, there's a little cup round as well that really marks the start of the season. So um, I thought it's the best thing to get it going and remind everyone, of everyone the Austria Bundesliga season is going because of all the leagues that I'm looking at, it, this is probably one that I follow very closely, but I think most of you probably don't see as much of the Austria Bundesliga, which in a way I've said it in last season's preview and last season I also did a little more introduction of going through the then 12 teams that were in there and how I love and I hate them. Uh, videos that are still very current with the exception that Admira is now down. Uh, but I think every, every everything that I said for the remaining team still applies. So uh, please check those video videos out. I, you actually might get a laugh out of this, <laughs> I'm pretty sure as well. But yeah, uh, as I said in last season preview, the Austrian league is ac ac actually in so far a very exciting one. It's a very offensive league, uh, always averaging well above three goals. And yes, the dominance of Red Bull Salzburg contributes to that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. However, um, it is also a very innovative league where, um, you know, there's a reason why Ralf Rangnick started the Salzburg Revolution that he's now the coach of Austria because uh, this high press and game pressing style is very much present in Austria as well. And in addition, it's kind of this uh, laboratory for uh, coaching styles that, you know, uh, how do you play against the counter press? Because Austrian teams have to deal on a regular basis with Red Bull Salzburg. And the different types of, types of Red Bull school. And then you have the... Uh, teams that have been copying, like it was Lask and Wolfsburg for a long time. Now this has been a little bit shifted. It goes no more towards Sturm Graz, uh, who uh, also um, successfully implemented that, um, and other teams. So it is really, really an in interesting league uh, to watch. Yes, the fight for the championship is not very exciting because that one, as we'll see, is already given to uh, the big bulls. Uh, pun fully intended, uh, in Salzburg. However, the rest of the league, as I said, it's very enjoyable. And I think it's again, there are four to five teams reasonably where you could say, uh, that they can definitely make a run for second place. And that always is the mark of a good league. Now I'm gonna go this, um, a little bit more methodically, we first look at which teams are in the league. Um, well, what are, who are the coaching changes? There was a, there was one, but very notable one in there. Uh, we look at the preseason expectations. I will, of course, talk a little bit about uh, the expectations of the team that I follow, which is Lusk. Who, yeah, if you look at the background. I tried to make it as neutral as possible, but you know, this side of the wall is entirely Lusk. Then there's one Lusk shot here and it's all Lusk behind me. I'm a Lusk fan. It's actually a travesty that I have uh, jerseys from four other Bundesliga teams. But hey, I decided since I'm covering the Bundesliga, I probably should have a few more jerseys. Uh, and uh, that's the only reason <laughs> why I'm doing this. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then, of course, we look at the uh, predictions for the league. And at the very, very end, I also want to uh, give you the upcoming games that happen while I'm on vacation. So to really get you hopefully set up for this Bundesliga season. Okay, let's start with the teams. Where is this? Where will this Bundesliga uh, season uh, be played? And here is the list. We have 12 teams as usual. The format, before we go into these teams, the format is the same as it has been the last few, few, few years. And I really hope that a change will come soon because we had already that the relegation battle was hugely influenced by the ridiculous format. It is, we have 12 teams that play each other home and away for a total of 22 games. Then the league is split in half. And not only is are these, the league is split in half in an upper level and a lower level, but also the points are split in half and then rounded down. And then in case of a tie uh, in, on points, the teams that have been rounded down uh, will get 
uh, moved forward. And then the tiebreak is actually head to head before goal difference, which is actually quite unique uh, in German speaking countries in, in, in a way. So the format, especially this halving of the points, I hate it. I know it is there to make the league a little bit more exciting because Salzburg will not have as much of, uh, uh, of an advantage going, going in, but still, uh, it hugely influenced last season's relegation battle where the team that was dead last had the, had the worst, uh, win loss, uh, record and they still managed to escape and actually then on the last day leap from, from last into, um, a comfortable ninth place it seems and just that just doesn't seem right in many ways and as much as I've been uh you know always wanting Admira to go down they really 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 did not deserve to go down but yeah here are the 12 uh teams we have Red Bull Salzburg we have Sturm Graz and they are in the order of how the league finished last season we have Austria Vienna Wolfsburg uh not Wolfsburger it's Wolfsberg Wolfsberger means from Wolfsburg it's Wolfsburg Athletic Club Athletic Club so uh Athletic Club from Wolfsburg more more or less uh we have Rapid Vienna we have Austria Klagenfurt you might notice already a second team with a nickname Austria. We have uh, Tirol, it's actually Wattens, and they play in Innsbruck. Go figure. We have Lask, my team. We have Alltag, we have Ried, we have Hartberg, and we have another Austria, Austria Lustenau. However, Austria Lustenau, unlike the other two Austrias and former Austria Salzburg here, these Austrias were like Austria Wien, all in purple. Austria Lustenau, for some reason, goes with the colors of the rival Rapid. It makes no sense whatsoever and is one of the big mysteries for me in uh, the Austrian League. Now, if you look at the map below here, you see we can roughly divide the teams in four clusters. We have, uh, going east to west, we have the um, uh, Vienna cluster. And now there are only two Vienna teams because Admira got uh, relegated. So uh, only two teams from, from Vienna. And then we have the southeast cluster, where we have two teams from Steiermark, meaning Sturm Graz and Hartberg. And then we have two uh, teams from Kärnten or Carinthia, which is Klagenfurt and Wolfsburg. So those are kind of... Uh, uh, the uh, games between those you can consider local derbies. Then we have the uh, northwest corner, which is Lask Ried from Upper Austria, and of course Red Bull South, 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 South Those are in relatively close pro 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 proximity with um, travel distances within one and a half hours of each other. So uh, those are all rivalries there. And then of course the huge west cluster, uh, not huge, the far west cluster. I, sh I, I should say with Tyrol who are now the only team in Tirol, which is uh, an absolute disaster, because Wacker Innsbruck now have been, they are still hope, 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 hope to, to make it into the fourth tier. They might actually have to go down to the ninth tier, um, depending on um, how much of the professional department is can be put onto the amateur department. And yeah, it's a huge disaster that a traditional team like Wacker Innsbruck basically uh, does not really exist anymore. So yeah, we have VSG Tirol, which is uh, Wattener Sportgemeinschaft Tirol. So this is actually Wattens, which is a town a little bit to the east of Innsbruck. Very, very small town, but it's the headquarters of the Swarovski Empire. And yeah, uh, that family has still a little bit of a say in that. And then we have two teams from Vorarlberg has been a long time that we have two teams from Vorarlberg. I always say, um, while I would like to have one team in Vorarlberg there just for the overall distribution, having two teams there is a little bit too much away travel because uh, you see it already, you have to travel through Germany or fly out there. Uh, and they're very close together and it's not sustainable for, uh, you know, where those two teams are in. It's very much one big urban conglomeration uh, of very different, t uh, different towns, but it's all still very um very tiny so having two teams there it is almost a little bit um yeah overkill there where there are uh, regions like um graz and linz with significantly more uh people around have only one team so just saying that i want to run through the stadiums as well because i'm actually meanwhile uh, when you look at stadiums in Austria, you can be actually quite, quite proud. It still runs the gamut from hyper modern, uh, stadiums to 
uh, very old fashioned stay AC system, but uh, year by year it is improving. And we'll start the same list. We start with the Red Bull Arena in Salzburg, has, has been built for Euro 2, 2008, was not built smaller as or, or original and it is still uh, one of the bigger uh, stadiums in Austria or the biggest league stadium at this moment in Austria. Uh, we have the former Schwarzenegger Stadion, Stadion Liebenau. It has of course some commercial name but I go with the traditional name if possible. Um, that uh, in Graz it's meanwhile almost uh, 25 years old or something like, like that. So uh, people are already saying it needs, it needs, it needs to be re rebuilt which I find a little bit funny. Then Austria Vienna have expanded their old stadium. Uh, also looks very modern and pro uh, proper now. I still remember going to the stadium in the late 90s where only uh, one stand that doesn't uh, exist anymore was there and there was um, absolutely nothing ar around and now it has, has been built up into a proper stadium. Um, then we have the first of the also Austrian stadiums and this is what you typically see in the countryside and this has been built up of course is the stadium in Wolfsburg, the Laventhal Arena. You have a track around it and then you have two stands and the rest is rather empty draped around it and you have sweeping views of the surroundings which is always nice and you know there are quite some mountains around there. I mean not, not huge mountains but you know it, it is scenic. Complete opposite is of course the new stadium of Rapid Vienna. I actually have to say um, while Austria Vienna looks really nice I think Rapid Vienna has an even better stadium uh, and I know they don't like to hear this in Wien Favoriten but I have to say they have done a really really good job there. Uh, it's a pretty amazing stadium also very uh, conveniently located if one traveling to to Vienna and so on. Good connection so um, yeah I may not like the team but that's a, that's a thing they have done really 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 well. Probably the most beautiful stadium in Austria is the Wörthersee Stadion in Klagenfurt. Hugely overdimensioned uh, for a team small as uh, small as Austria Klagenfurt, they never sell it out. It's only the lower tier that gets a few, but it's uh, a beautiful stadium built for Euro 2008. When that, um, and they always had trouble finding a tenant. Now we have Austria Klagen, Klagenfurt in, in there, so uh, you get some, some something. But I would opine that this is a stadium, as beautiful as it is, it's a little bit too big for its own good, unfortunately. Then uh, another um, almost 25 year old stadium now is the Tivoli Neu in Innsbruck, which of course Wacker Innsbruck is not playing any, any, anymore. It's also, um, it is in Innsbruck, it's also a pretty modern and uh, nice stadium. It was the only one that has been built back from what they had at the Euros where they had this huge uh, three on three, three, three sides, really steep. It was the most impressive stadium, I think, at Euro 2008, and it was built back now to the smaller capacity, which makes a whole lot of sense for Austria uh, in, in in general. Now to my team, last guy actually will show you three pic pictures because the first half of the season they will still play in the Waldstadion in Pasching, which is a suburb of Linz. Uh, it's actually technically not even in Linz. Uh, it is very closely to where my work office is uh, and the big uh, shopping center is near, near nearby but it's too small into the middle of a residential area. Uh, it was never meant to host Bundesliga games, uh, just to put it like that. So Lask have been building their new stadium and uh, the good news is that come uh, the uh, new year, the new stadium will be ready to be played in. Here is a current picture of the state of the stadium. It already looks like a stadium. So uh, everyone is very optimistic that this will uh, be finished on time. I'm very excited about that and the end product of course looks like that. It will have just below 20,000 um, seats and that will be for Lask the biggest, biggest news in there. Uh, then we have the one in Altach, which has been built in a nice arena and they almost got relegated. But I have to say that's in fallback. It, 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 this is a, a pretty cool sta it's a stadium. Uh, then Reed also has a very, very tiny, but very proper, little proper sta it's, it's, it's a st stadium. This also now existing for almost 15 years. Uh, and they have done really, really well with that. Um, and then we have probably my favorite stadium in Hartberg. This is like Wolfsburg. You have the track, but now meanwhile, all the stands have been put 
closely. You have sweeping views of the surroundings and you know the hills going up there. And then finally we have Austria Lustenau, which is directly you know, here you, on the left you see the Rhine River, which is the border between Austria and Switzerland. So it's basically right at the edge of Austria. A uh, very weird stadium. It's also of this old style, but meanwhile, the field, even the pitch goes even over the athletics track. And so, yeah, uh, it looks rather curious. Now, as for the new coaches going in, there have not been many, many, many changes. Most changes happened actually already during the last season. Most notably, Didi Cuba being the coach of last last season, he was at the European. There was a huge rivalry there. Uh, Ferdinand Feldhofer calm coming in uh, at Rapid, so those are the really, really notable changes. But other than that, it has been rather, rather steady, except you read where I think they had three co coaches, and now I've said it on Heinle. Um, but the big one is, you see, Altach. Yes, this is Miroslav Klose. Miroslav Klose went from the amateur team of Bayern and is coaching Altach. I'm not sure what to make of it, but this is a major uh, signing in any way. It puts a little bit shine on the Austrian Bundesliga and, you know, um, I wish him well. I just have my doubts. Uh, Ludwig Magnor went to Lausanne Sports. So these are the coaching changes. Now, before we go further, uh, what are my expectations for LASK? It's, as I said, it's the, the season where the new stadium is going to come in. Um, I hope that this time it will be a top six finish, which most likely will also coincide with a uh, European uh, spot. That is what I'm lo looking forward to. I have not been very happy with the transfer strategy because many uh, players have been lost and what's coming in, I'm not quite sure yet what to make of it, but I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. My May May is in coach Cuba. Yes, he had a reasonable success uh, in Austria coaching teams and has been build, building up to have top six finishes and, and so on and so on. So, and that's in my, he might be a stabilizing factor. I just see that he's not a coach that will carry forward this uh, high intensity pressing style. He's more a defensive coach and that I'm afraid is not going to fly very, 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 very well. And yeah, the other thing is the new jerseys uh, are just an abomination. And thinking that the first half season the new, new, new stadium will, will play in those ugly yellow sleeves, swim wings, they call them. Yeah, not very looking forward to. But let's see how is the uh, season expected to end. And I'm going to have to do this in two steps because we have, of course, uh, the regular season and the regular season. We see already Salzburg ahead of every, every, everyone else. It is almost damning. As you see, this big green blot, which means, yeah, it's a foregone conclusion. Salzburg will finish first. And that's a very even league overall. So uh, it's Salzburg and then the rest. Best of the rest, at least in the regular season, Sturm Graz and Rapid uh, and Lask, Austria Vienna would actually be the, uh, you know, depending on how, on how, how you can see it, the third or the fourth strongest team in uh, Austria. However, they start with a three point uh, deduction uh, due to problems with the license. And so their, their strategy of getting many players in just uh, raises many questions mark at this point. But based on that, they will just squeak into the top six. On the bottom, we have the two fallback teams. Yeah, uh, we have to see. I have a feeling that uh, because every promoted team so in the last five, six years, they have been staying up and heck, actually started a big stay. So I actually think the, uh, the, the team to go down will probably between Hartberg, Klagenfurt, Ried and Altach. Those are for, I think that Lusna will stay in the league. And going forward, yeah, uh, to the expected final standings where we split, split up the league, you see Lucena is down, but it's Altach very, very close by. So, uh, Altach really seems like something, but yeah, Miroslav Klose, the coach. I won't be surprised if Klagenfurt or Ried go down, uh, and Hartberg also looks shaky to, but also the higher, higher, the good coach. But on top, it's a four inclusion, uh, who will win and then Rapid and Sturm more or less level. And I think Lask and Austria Vienna, uh, will make the other teams and never underestimated Wolfsburg with, uh, Robin Dutt. I also don't think that those, those are clearly the top six teams in Austria in many ways. I don't think that they will all six make it to the uh, upper playoff. There will be one of those will drop out and that it will be the curious thing. To see, I really hope it's not Lusk. Uh, I it was one season was enough because there was a time where 
there was a chance that you can get relegated. Uh, they never re uh, we were in last place, but that was in the in, 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 in the regular season. But it's not fun playing in this lower league, uh, in this lower part because it, it's just madness. It's absolute madness. Um, upcoming games. I said there's a cup round. Here are the matches of the top 10 teams from last season. We have uh, Red Bull playing at Fügen in Tirol, Austria Klagenfurt having go to Fallberg, to Dornbirn, Rapid Vienna have to go to Kärnten, uh, Treibach, uh, Tirol uh, has to have played as Neusiedl, which is Burgenland, all the way in the east, so Rapid has to go uh, south, you know. They like to send people, uh, team teams around. Sturm has to go also to uh, Fallberg, uh, Ried has to go to Vienna, to Stadlau. Also, also Austria win. That's interesting because uh, former last vice president and uh, he, the mastermind behind uh, last getting built up is now an investor at Austria Vienna, and he's from Wales, and now he has to play his first uh, game there in Wales. Very, very interesting. Lask has to play against Schwarz in Tirol, who are actually a pretty good side. Altach have to play at um, Team Wiener Linien, the tramway lines. Uh, Elektra is a, a, a new team in in Wien, uh, in Vienna. And Wolfsburg have to play in Salzburg. Kuche, uh, I love the crest with the weird devil in there. So that's the cup round, as I said, uh, selection. And then the first round, it really kicks off with Salzburg against Austria Wien. Uh, absolute classic and Salzburg is going to demolish them. Lask kicks off then against Austria Klagenfurt. Um, yeah, given that the next few opponents are then rather, rather stiff. I think you have Austria Wien, then you have uh, Rapid Wien and I think Sturm Graz or whatever. It's a really, really, really tough schedule to start off. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a must win uh, right off the, off the get go. Then we have already uh, kind of a, a big derby between Wolfsburg and Sturm. And then the other, I have to say, yes, the Western Derby is in Lustenau and Tirol. Then Hartberg Alltag is already a relegation battle in, <laughs> in a sense. And then, uh, Rapid Vienna got the softest, uh, draw ever. Because Reed, whenever they go to Vienna, there's only one certainty that they will lose. They have never even got a point there. So, yeah. When I come back from vacation, I will talk about these two rounds uh, and then we'll preview the other one. And yeah, I'm not sure if I will do preview video videos uh, as extensive as uh, uh, here um, for the other leagues, but at least you will get uh, another, um, you will get other uh, preview videos for sure, at least to show you what's expected from these leagues, because I think it is uh, interesting to see. In any case, um, what I wanted to do is you don't need to choose my team Lask because there's enough Lask in it, although I would be happy if you do. Pick a team in Austria, follow the league. I think it's fun. Uh, there are really, really interesting storylines in there. And again, I recommend to you my love and hate videos for all these teams. Yes, Admira is out, but it's still very interesting and a fun to watch. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!